As the use of solar energy becomes popular, technology is offering new alternatives for using this long overlooked resource. A usual way of taking advantage of solar energy is through photovoltaic panels, whose energy is sent to the lines of the power company and anybody can produce their own electricity for the home and also sell their excess power to other company users. Even though the owner of the photovoltaic equipment does not receive their money in cash, but they get credits in a power stock reservoir, so they can use this virtually stored energy whenever solar yield is low, for example at night or on extremely cloudy days. These systems use several solar panels that produce a form of electrical energy called direct current, or DC, which is electric current always flowing only one way, which is not suitable for most household appliances nor to be sold to the power company. It's necessary to convert DC to household AC by means of a device called an inverter, which yields AC current similar to the electricity supplied by the power company. The usual way to install a solar power plant is to wire a group of solar panels in series and send the resulting DC to a central inverter, also called a string inverter, placed indoors and which delivers the appropriate AC voltage, both to be used at the home and to be returned to the power company lines. This type of installation works reasonably well, but has to be sized and performed by experts in both solar energy and electricity. There is another much friendlier possibility for those who prefer to do things themselves. In this video we are going to make a comparison between both systems for those who are considering the possibility of installing photovoltaic solar energy at home. This alternative consists of the use of small devices called microinverters. These are placed on the roof of the building, behind the solar panels. These small devices can receive DC from up to four panels and deliver the AC current from the roof to be used at the home or sent to the electricity company. In both cases, a special electricity meter is required, called bidirectional, which shows two readings. The first one with the energy you have purchased from the electricity company, while the second reading shows the amount of energy produced by your panels and sold to the power company. The first difference between a central inverter inside the home and a roof-mounted microinverter for each group of four panels is that in the case of microinverters, the cables going down the roof carry the AC current ready for either self-consumption or to be stored at the power company energy stock. Apparently there is no advantage to this, but we will soon see it really matters. A central inverter must be designed according to the size of the system. That is part of the job of solar experts. A central inverter requires greater knowledge to make the connection of the DC coming from the panels, in which the polarity and the voltages involved must be taken into account. The voltage of a group of 10 panels in series can easily exceed 500 volts. This way, while a central inverter installation requires a specific design as to size, an installation using microinverters can be started with as few as four panels and one microinverter, and you can add new kits of four panels with their corresponding microinverter as required, without paying for the total installation all at once. So, as new high power appliances are being installed in the home, mini splits, clothes dryers, electric water heaters, etc., you can add more kits of four panels and their corresponding inverters in order to compensate for the heavier electricity consumption. The plug and play connections of the microinverters makes it impossible to make a mistake when wiring the panels 
and inverters, since the connectors used are male and female and cannot be inserted the wrong way. In the case of using a central inverter, if one of the panels is shaded, say, by a tree, such panel decreases its performance and affects the total performance of the series. If microinverters are used, it only affects the output of the shaded panel without affecting the performance of all other panels. A third difference is that a central inverter has at its input or pair of inputs a circuit called MPPT, maximum power point tracking, that ensures that it is making the most of the capacities of the group of panels, while a microinverter for four panels has an MPPT circuit for each of its four panels, which increases efficiency. A fourth difference is that the fact that a string inverter gets a high voltage from the panels in series of the order of 500 volts, and this poses a greater possibility of inverter circuit malfunction, whereas in microinverters the voltage coming from a single panel rarely exceeds 80 volts, thus increasing the microinverter's life expectancy. A fifth difference is very important and rules out a person not familiar with electricity nor solar energy from installing a central inverter. And this is that the high voltage produced by a series of panels can easily cause very dangerous and generally fatal electrical shocks to the installer. A 500 volt DC current discharge can cause instant death. This is actually the most powerful reason why the only type of installation that can be done safely by a handyman is one that uses microinverters. I hope this video will be useful for you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.